Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Today I'm going to be doing a little bit of pruning. I'm going to start off with my Portulacaria Afroforest. It doesn't need any major work, just a little bit of pruning. We are still getting some cool temperatures at night, so I move all the tropicals into the heated glass greenhouse here for the nighttime, and then in the daytime I move them back outside. So I'll do that now, clear off my bench area here, and begin work on pruning. I am ready to begin the pruning. On the main tree, it was high on this side, and I didn't want to cut it off because they were kind of thick and developed with lots of taper, those branches. So my goal was to keep this side of the tree quite short and to grow this side of the tree longer so eventually they kind of even out forming sort of a, um, a very shallow umbrella shaped canopy. Here is a look at the tree up close so you can see how tall it's getting here. I'm getting a lot of back budding in some of these areas so I can shorten all this winter growth up with some more compact summer growth. So. Here I go. So the goal is to keep this side short. So I have a lot of buds here. So I'm going to do some pretty hard pruning here. So I'll take this one off right here. Like that. Then on this side, this branch is getting long. I have a leaf here. I could prune back to that and I will. Taking this whole part off. Here I go. Like that. Out front here I have a leaf or a branch that's going the right direction here. This one's crossing back on the inside of the tree so I'll take that out. That one clean up my stub here. Okay that looks better. Uh, I have a branch coming up here it divides into a very wide Y shape and none of the branches are that attractive. I'll take out my stub up the middle so all I can do is prune it back shorter, and I will, to here. You can see there's a new branch growing here. And this one, the inner node's very, very long here. Uh, I think that one's just going to have to come off, like that. At the back here, there's a branch that's getting quite long also. Um, I'm looking to see if there's any back budding. Nothing really much yet. Let's have a look at that. So here's a look at that trunk line here. It, it kind of comes back. i just not seeing any new buds in that area. Um, I'm going to prune it back. There is... Buds will develop here. So I'm going to take this winter growth off to here, making it more compact and I'll take this one off to here. Getting that down in height. Now I have a branch out the back here. Ah, it looks okay. I'll keep that one. I don't think I need this outer part here, this part that goes straight back, so I'll take that bit of it off. Kind of getting that more compact. You can see now it's looking much more like a baobab tree. Uh, there. I want it to grow on this side, but I don't want it to grow, you know, out of the profile. So I need to prune some of these long ones back. So I will. So this one out front here, uh, I've got some branching in this area, so I'll prune it back to here. This one here crosses this trunk line in a very strange way. I'm going to take it right out. It's just a very strange looking branch. I've got compact growth up here, so I'll take this shoot back to those new branches like that. And then out the back I have some pretty strong, long, leggy winter growth, so I'll prune it back to some new branches here and take this one back to here. I'm stepping back having a look at it. I can see pruning the tip off here to get some more branching. Uh, this one is too long. I'll take it back to, to here. This one out the back is too long. Take that off. And even this one out the back here is too long. I've got better branching. I'm going to take it right off. 
I've got lots of branches in that area. I'll also prune this one right off. It's vertical. Like that. That is looking much better. This one out the front, that needs pruning. I'm going to prune it back to here. Okay, that's looking better. It's a little more, a little more of a umbrella shaped canopy. Now I'm looking at the scarring on the trunk. I've uh, really scarred this tree up over the years. It's looking kind of cool too. This one looks a little maybe striped. I'm going to just take a bit off here just to make it look a little more irregular. Now I'm looking at the other trees in the forest, just checking out what needs pruning. So this one here, it's getting quite long. I need to prune back. Uh, I'll prune back to here. I see some scale on here. I'll show you that. On this branch, I can see some scale insects which is very unusual for this species. I, I don't get scale on them very often. Here's a close-up of that branch. Right there, you can see the little scale blisters on the branch. So I'll have to scrape those and spray the tree. I'm coming in and scraping all those scale blisters off. They will zap the growth of your trees. Yeah, I, I usually don't get it on this species, but so that one branch had some. It had about you know, seven on it. And I'm not seeing any others. There's one back here. I'm looking for more and not seeing any so far. Don't think that's one there, no. No, I think. I think it was just that, these two trees. This one only had one blister that I see. Well, maybe there's another one here. No? Okay. I'll spray them down with soap and water. I've got my water and soap mixture. This is the liquid dish soap that you use for hand washing dishes and I, I don't measure it, I just put some in the bottom. They say to mix it approximately 40 parts water to one part liquid dish soap and I try and match that. And then I shake it up, stir it up and it's ready to spray on. So here I go. That should do it. I leave the soap and water on the trees for three or four minutes and then I rinse it off thoroughly. All right, here I go rinsing the trees off. And I flush out the soil in the pot too to get rid of the soap. And that should do it. It's a good practice to always test whatever you're spraying on trees on a small portion first, 
sort of a sacrifice branch. See how the tree reacts. If there's no problem with the, uh, with the spray, then you can use it on the whole tree. If you do notice a problem with the area you sprayed, then you've got to switch to something else. I'll finish pruning up all the rest of the trees in the forest, getting rid of any long branches, kind of making the canopies a little more compact. So here I go. People ask me, do I ever defoliate my uh, Port de la Cariaphras? I don't. I just prune them back and I find it does, you know, the same thing as defoliation. You get new smaller growth in, more compact growth. I mean, sometimes you can, like, twist off the bigger leaves, getting rid of them. But generally, I don't go in and defoliate the entire tree. And... It works. I mean, it's a good technique, but I just find it's not necessary because I'm developing these trees still. They're not uh, like show trees with a branch structure in place. But someday, maybe my techniques will change as the trees get more and more refined. And I do hard prune branches back to the point where there's no leaves on them. And that's kind of like defoliation. It uh, the new growth comes in and has to sort itself out, growing in new smaller leaves. I'm taking off some of the bigger indoor leaves here. They're uh, kind of not looking the greatest. They're getting old and they're large, so I'm just removing them, allowing more light to get into the branches for new growth. And now that these trees are outdoors, like in the greenhouse or the, you know, out on the bench, you can prune them a little harder than you could indoors in the winter because you have much better light levels. The trees are healthier. They react to pruning much better. When the trees are indoors, you have to treat them with care because, you know, they don't grow as strong. Just pulling out some of the weeds here too. I have finished the pruning and the weeding, so you can see all the weeds I took out. There's a lot of them. Just little ones growing everywhere. going to be repotting this forest this summer into a ceramic pot. It's always been in this mica training pot. I think it's time to kind of finalize the landscape or at least at this stage of development getting a nice landscape kind of uh, getting it ready uh, for eventually being a show tree. So that will be coming. I, uh, I bought a new pot at the Toronto Bonsai Society Spring Show and Sale it might be a suitable pot for it. I'll show you what it looks like up against the forest. So here is my pot. It's not as long as the other one. It's shorter. But I think it's just as wide. Yeah, it looks the same width. So it's just shorter. It would make a more compact planting. Here's the pot in front of the planting. I'll see if I can get an angle 
that gives you an approximation of what it looks like. Because of the perspective, the pot looks really deep here, but it's not actually too bad. It kind of matches the thickness of the main tree there. Yeah, so I don't know. If I move back, you might be able to see it better, but back further, there's less perspective. So yeah, there's kind of an idea of what it would look like in that color pot. And I've been thinking about the color of the pot for quite a while. There is two ways I would display this forest. One is the wet season image where you have moss and the green leaves on the tree. So you would have sort of a greener landscape. So you'd have the green leaves, the green moss, and then the pot would look good matching kind of the trunk color. So a either a dark brown or a tan or even an olive kind of color would look good. That other pot there that I had is kind of like that color. It would match really nicely for the wet season look. For the dry season look, I would defoliate the tree. Speaking of defoliation, that's I would do it for a show. Uh, defoliate the tree so you just have the brown kind of trunks. The uh, There would be no moss or anything. It would just be that desert sand color as the uh, ground cover. So you need... You would have the brown, the brown. You would need something to kind of, um, I couldn't have, I don't think a sand colored pot because I'd have the sand color, the sand color, and then the trunks. So I think I would again need a dark brown, a darker than this brown, something that would provide contrast, the dark brown, the sand, and then the darker trunks. So I, I think, I think for an overall, uh, color scheme that would work in both seasons, maybe this color of this pot, which is sort of got tans, desert color, the darker browns on the lip, and it has some green in it. So I think this is the perfect color pot. It's not the perfect size pot. I would actually like a larger pot, maybe even a little shallower than that one, and the larger pot would make the trees look more like an isolated landscape. It would give them room around the trees. Uh, I don't want the trees bunched together to look like a dense forest. I want them isolated like you would see in the African savanna. If I don't find a better pot, I can use this pot and I don't have to use every tree that's in this forest. I can uh, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight trees in here, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, there's eight trees, so I could definitely bring it down to five trees in the smaller pot. That would look good. I don't need eight trees in this forest. It's funny, I got a comment that said every time I watch a video on this forest, it looks worse and worse. And that can be true. Uh, with clip and grow, you know, I let it grow out, I cut it back, let it grow out, cut it back. And there's been, you know, quite a few major, major trunk chops on this tree to get this kind of width and character in the trunk. So it's part of clip and grow that your trees don't look good all the time. You grow them out, prune them back, grow them out, prune them back. But eventually you get a nice trunk with lots of character and then you start work on developing the branch structure. And that's the stage I'm at now, is developing my branch structure. I'll put my African Baobab style Portulacaria Afroforest back on the bench and begin working on another tree. I was talking about dry desert landscapes. So here's an update to my Socotra Island Desert Rose Forest. So you can see all the trees are beginning to leaf out. which is nice to see. So these trees have been leafless the entire winter. There was the occasional time where they put some leaves out and then they died off again in the winter. But basically they've been, you know, just naked the entire winter. And I haven't watered them the entire winter. So now I'm watering this planting, this forest, about once every three or four days. And I water it thoroughly and I water and fertilize it. 
And everything's grow greening up and growing. It's looking really good. All the new little cuttings I put in have new growth up top. So that's kind of exciting. The aloe I put in back there uh, is, looks like it's going to flower. If we come up top here, you can see the yellow flower just starting to come out there, which is exciting. So um, there are several people in the comments didn't like this tall tree out front here. And I've been looking at it and thinking, ah, yeah, maybe it could be pruned off short, sort of like this kind of a height. So that might be coming. Uh, I'm not going to do it now because it's just starting to grow and I want it to root properly in the soil. Once it's rooted and growing with vigor, then I'll cut it back. A lot of the cuttings, the Portula carry Afro cuttings, you can see the leaves are kind of dried up. Uh, they're not real vigorous. That one, that one did dry up. So yeah, I've been uh, watering them every three or four days. They could probably use a little more frequent watering than that, but it's keeping the desert rose happy. And that's my main concern. I don't want those dying off on me. Once they're out into leaf, you can water them more, but I don't want to water these. I don't want to grow these trees much bigger. I've got to be really careful with the watering to keep them dry, small, and miniature. So that's, that's a look at a, a dry landscape. So again, I've got the color of the desert rose. I have the green, the tan, which matches the sand. And then I think the pot, the ideal pot for this might be a green pot to match the leaves. These are the first desert rose plants that I've gotten through the winter. So I'm kind of excited that I actually managed to keep these alive and they're doing well. So oh, that's uh, it was a learning experience, these desert rows. I mean, I basically learned uh, don't do any pruning or bonsai operations to them until it's summertime and then dry all your cuts out. Uh, use cinnamon or sulfur dry those cuts out thoroughly before you start watering again and in Canada here at least don't water them at all in winter like not even a little bit let them go through the whole winter totally dry they have enough water stored in their trunks to keep them alive through the whole winter even that little one at the back there I didn't water it at all and it made it through the winter when I began this video it was supposed to be a video on some minor pruning, tidying up some trees, getting some of that spring growth cut back. I don't know what kind of video it's turned into now, but it's not a minor pruning video. It's turned into a discussion on desert plantings, which is fine. So let me get out another tree and begin the pruning. The next tree or trees I'll be working on is my Chinese village, Penjing. There's some pruning I can do on the trees and some cleanup in the landscape. Here is a look at the planting. So it's coming along really nicely. The trees have leafed out really well. Lots of back budding. I'm very happy with it. It uh, didn't look so good in spring. It had scale insects and it would die back. and So it's looking much better now. I'm going to start today by cleaning up the weeds. There's a lot of liverwort in here and... There's weeds all throughout the planting that I need to pull out. I'm going to start pulling out the liverwort. So my goal is to show this forest this fall. I showed it last fall at the KW show, but I'm hoping to show it in the Toronto show because that's where these trees came from. They were tiger bark ficus cuttings and there are several people in the club were given them and each person did something different with the cuttings. I planted a forest, uh, some people made clump styles out of them, a fusion kind of ficus, uh, and yeah, so there, there was various techniques people used on these uh, tiger bark ficus cuttings. So I'm going to bring this to the Toronto show so people can see an update of what happened to those cuttings. Got the roots. And, you know, people grow these cuttings and 
it's nice for them to see that people care about them, that they're not just, you know, they didn't just start the cuttings for no reason, that people neglect them in the corner of their bonsai bench and don't really do anything with them. It's nice to see that, you know, people appreciate the cuttings and do something with them and grow them into bonsai. So these kind of pots, these shallow pots, um, they don't get much drainage because they're so shallow. So a good idea is to tilt them up, is to put a block of wood under one end of the pot so they get better drainage. And it can really keep the, both the trees and everything else in the planting really healthy. So I'd highly recommend it. You just have to watch that your trees don't start growing crooked. You don't want, you know, too much of a slant on the pot. So maybe alternate the ends of the pot that you put the block under once a week and that should keep your trees growing nice and straight. I'm going to give the planting a water. It's getting a little dry and I think it'll help me pull the weeds out. It might make it a little easier. So here I go with the water. It's a spring rain in the Chinese village. I've got my village weeded. So here's a look at everything I pulled out. There is a lot, a lot of weeds here. And then that's not the end of it. Over here, you can see all the weeds I pulled out there too. Yeah, it was a very weedy planting. There's a lot of areas of moss that is being reluctant to green up back here. It's kind of still brown. I guess it's starting to green up, but yeah, it'll get there. So this is another planting to keep it nice and healthy. You can tilt it up to get good drainage so you can water more frequently, more water, more fertilizer. The trees will be healthier. They'll get more air in that soil, fresh air. Yeah, so next, this is a pruning video. So I'm going to begin pruning up the trees. Most of the trees in this forest don't need much pruning at the moment. They're still just, you know, the new shoots are emerging. They're not wildly out of control or outside the shape of the canopy. There's a couple like this shoot here. I can prune that back, back to here, like that. This one here is starting to extend. I can prune that back to here. So my pruning today is just to kind of keep all this new growth within the profile of the tree. I'm going around all the other trees now, just pruning back any long shoots that have extended out. Just a little bit of maintenance pruning to keep the trees in check. And that was the whole purpose of this video, was just to prune up some of the kind of excessively long branches and some of the trees. Taking off some yellow leaves here. Some old leaves. I think that's got them pretty well in check. Once these uh, branches develop more, I'll be doing a more thorough pruning. Selecting branches, pruning them. But for now, it's just to keep those really long shoots kind of in check so the trees don't get too wild looking and too far out of the profile. Here's one last look at the tiger bark ficus, all pruned up for today. I'm going to do one more tree today. The next tree I'm going to work on is a Russian olive. They're not actually an olive, it's a, I'll put the scientific name in the description. Um, this tree is in a small root maker pot and it dries out so fast that I have to water it four or sometimes five times a day and even then, you can see a lot of the lower leaves are turning yellow. It's just not getting enough water and nutrients. So today, I'm going to prune it back to a much smaller tree, so the demand for water will be much less. The other option I have is I could slip pot it into a larger pot, but I'm quite happy keeping this a small tree for now. So let's start the pruning. I'm looking at the tree now, ready to prune it up. So the main trunk line comes up and it, it divides in two here. 
One is more slanting, the other is more vertical. Um, I don't think I want to style this in a slanting style, so I'm choosing this as my main leader of the tree or the trunk leader. And I think I'll keep this one as a back branch. So I'll take off the vertical growth here, keeping my horizontal branch, taking that off. There's one shooting straight up here. I'll take that off, that. And then this is my main leader. So I have a bud right here so I can prune it back to here, leaving a stub. So that gets my height of my tree down. I'll prune this one. There's a bud facing downward here. So I'll prune it back to there. This one has a bud facing down. So I'll prune it to there. Yeah. This one has a downward facing bud. Prune it to there. And this one also. Maybe there, leaving that one a little longer. Oh, I just saw some white fly flying on my tree. Got it. Um, now, I've got a branch coming off here, sort of a major, almost a trunk line division. And I have a shoot coming vertical here. There's a stub here I can clean up. Um, nothing really flowing, so I'll put it back short like that. Off of this kind of thicker branch, there's a branch coming off here. I'll bring it to here. Again, a downward facing bud. Uh, there's a branch coming out here. I think it's got to come back to here. Like that. At the bottom here, I have two opposite branches. I only need one of them. So which one do I choose? That's the question. One is thicker than the other. I think because I have the major trunk line coming up on this side, I'm going to remove this one. Like that, and then I'll prune this one back to here. So that's kind of got the tree compact now. Um, I'm just looking for other opposite branches. I don't think I need this one here. I'll take this one off. there and I've got this division here I don't need this third branch here that comes off I think everything else is looking good yeah well it's taken a big tree and got it very very compact so now the watering Requirements for this tree will be much less because it's compact and it should grow new leaves in within, you know, a week or two. You're going to see the strong buds there already. So I'll show you an update to this tree once it leaves out. I said that would be the last tree, the Russian olive, but I'm going to do one more, my Korean maple. Here is a look at the Korean maple. So in the winter time, I pruned it shorter. I pruned a long leader off the top of the tree and this one side branch is taken over as a new leader and it's starting to thicken up um, there's it doesn't really flow that well there is some buds forming here so it's possible I'll get a more flowing branch in future I'm going to prune this long one off short back to here so here I go like that that gets the tree a little more compact you can see there's a shoot here that could flow quite nicely with the trunk. There's another one back here, a new branch forming. So I think cutting that leader off will stimulate those branches to grow. And I'll have more to choose from in the future. I will plant this as a cutting, so I'll remove all the leaves except for just a few. And put it in my cutting bin. And maybe it'll grow, we'll see. So I'm just leaving two leaves on top and I'll plant that. I'll just stick it in the soil and see what happens. Here is a look at the Korean maple close up. So at the base of the tree, you can see there's already some trunk flare developing and that's because the roots were pruned in a radial pattern. So a radial root base will thicken up the base of the tree, creating that nice flare at the root base. 
I think this has been a bit of an eclectic video jumping around from tree to tree. But that is all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone.